So before we dive into learning Latin, you need to know that it is an inflected language. And so this video is going to explain what that means um, so it's not as scary of a term to you. And then when we're done with this, we're going to start talking about some Latin grammar. So first things first, let's talk about how English generally works. And English is not an inflected language. So that's an important thing here. So we rely rather than endings, we rely on word order. So in this sentence, the slave sees the master, we know that the slave is doing the scene because it comes before the verb, and the master is being seen because it comes after the verb. So we know that we have the subject here, the slave, and we have the direct object here. Now in English, all we have to do to change the, the meaning of a sentence is move the word order around. So now we have the master sees the slave and we have the same thing. The master now is the subject and the slave is the direct object. We haven't changed the form of the word at all. There's no ending here. Word order is key in English. That is not going to be the case in Latin. What's going to be key in Latin is the ending on words and that's going to be a, a mindset you're going to have to get into for this year. Once you get into that the endings follow very regular patterns, but word order doesn't matter. So let's stick with this sentence because it's pretty simple and let's talk about how this would work in Latin and maybe this example will help you out a little bit. So the Latin word for master is dominus and the Latin word for slave is servus and if we're going to put in the verb to see, he sees is going to be widet. So just be aware that these endings, the U.S., even with verbs, the T ending and this U.S., those are going to change all the time. Endings will never stay the same. But if we were going to translate this sentence into Latin, it would be dominus. So that's just that standard first form. Sees, we debt, the slave would be ser wum. So you see that as a direct object, this ending is going to change from US to UM. And you're going to learn different rules for this. This word order could be anything you want it to be. So you could um, flip this around and it could be ser wum widet dominus. And even though now serum comes first, because this has that ending and this has this ending, we still know the master is seeing the slave. Um, the verb can go wherever you want. So you could have the two nouns next to each other. You could have serum dominus we debt, or even put the we debt up here. And all of these sentences are the master sees the slave. Word order does not matter in the least. So here we flip the sentence around. Now it's no longer the master sees the slave. It's the slave sees the master. And I imagine you can figure out that the slave is the subject. So it's going to be ser wuss. Let's put the verb just for fun at the end because we can. And that's actually closer to Latin word order than normal. And then because the slave is seeing the master, it's going to be dominum. So subject, direct object. If you see that the ending is different, that is what indicates the grammatical function in the sentence. It is not the word order in Latin. We do have some inflection in English, and so it is good to think about, you know, endings are not so strange for us. Um, as something as simple as um, making something plural. Pencil in the singular in the plural goes to pencils. That S ending is, you know, sort of like inflection. It's an ending. Same thing with possession. If you had the name Mark and you wanted to make it possessive, you would add an apostrophe S. That also is kind of a holdover of inflection. And then we also have some rules, you know, the fact that family, if you make it plural, goes to families, I-E-S, so we have these rules that Y nouns go to I-E-S, and even something like woman in the plural goes to woman, 
en. So we do have these little rules of endings, not as much as Latin does, and not as much as most of the Romance languages do, but we have those rules with nouns. We're also going to have them with verbs and pronouns a little bit. If you think about verbs, if you had the sentence, I see something, the verb, obviously, is S-E-E, -E, whereas he sees something, that's another example of the occasional inflection we have in English when you add that S to the end of a verb when you go from I to he. Latin is going to change endings with every different type of subject, but for us, from I to he, it changes. For when you go back to we or they, it goes back to see, but we have this S ending here. And then finally with pronouns, um, the difference between I and me and my, that's another example of very minimal inflection in the English language. So you know that if I am the subject, I eat chocolate, it's going to be I, obviously. If the sentence is he sees me, this me here is the direct object. It's the same, th I and me refer to the same person, but it's a different form of the pronoun because it's doing something different grammatically in the sentence. So if you can kind of keep those examples in the back of your mind when you're getting a little overwhelmed with all the different endings in Latin, that might help a little bit. And just as we would never start a sentence with me, me eat chocolate, in the same way the Romans would never make a subject have the wrong sort of an ending. So in Latin for nouns and verbs and pronouns and adjectives, you're going to get the definition of the word from the base or the stem. So uh, the definition is going to come from the base of the word. But the grammatical function, what the word is doing in a sentence, is going to come from the ending. So we're constantly going to be talking about what does the word mean, that's the basic definition, and that comes from the stem of the word, versus what is it doing in a sentence, and that's going to come from the ending. Let's think of a Latin word like an ice cream sundae. So you're always going to start with a scoop of ice cream. That's like the base of the word, the what the word means. And then on top of that, let's say you're going to add strawberry syrup. That's one type of sundae, and the strawberry syrup, syrup adds a particular flavor to it. Now let's think if we don't want a strawberry sundae, we can go back to the original base. The ice cream is still the same. And then, what if we want to add caramel sauce, because we want something a little bit different. Still an ice cream sundae, still has the same base, but it has a different flavor, and some days you feel like caramel, some days you feel like strawberry. If you're more of a purist like me, and you like Hershey's chocolate syrup, that's what I would go for, but that's an individual taste. Either way, you always have to have the scoop of ice cream underneath. You're never going to have syrup without ice cream in the same way you're never going to have endings without a base. But the foundation, the, the kind of main structure of the word is going to be the ice cream cone. That's what the word means. And then the sauce on top gives it its own little spin. Another way to think of this idea of an inflected language and a foundation plus an ending is iPhones and cases. So each of these examples, each of these pictures here, there's an iPhone and it's surrounded by a particular case. And the cases do different things. This case here holds your credit cards. This case here would protect your iPhone in a disaster. This case here is friendly to look at and makes you happy. Um, these are all different types of cases. As you can see, they're similar. It's not like the cases are radically different things, and the endings you're going to see in Latin are just kind of switched out letters, but different cases are for different purposes. I think I would look pretty silly if I walked into a classroom with a monkey case. You wouldn't want to take this case with you whitewater rafting, but maybe you would take this case with you whitewater rafting. But the base of all this, none of these cases are anything without the iPhone as its base. But as long as you've got the iPhone, you can add different cases for different scenarios. Same thing in Latin. You're going to have the base of the word. That's going to be the meat of the word. 
and then you're going to add various different endings, and those are the accompanying vegetables that go along with the meat. So we've been talking about bases and endings in Latin in the abstract, and I want to just give you a few examples so that you can see how this works in Latin, so you don't walk away from this video thinking, man, there was a lot of gobbledygook, but I never really saw any Latin. So just to give you an example of a verb, if you had the verb stow with that O ending, that would mean I stand. Versus if you had stas with this AS ending, that would mean you stand. So that's an example of um, inflection with verbs. If you have the word ego, that equals I. So if, you, if I am the subject of a sentence, you're going to say ego. Versus if you have the pronoun me in Latin, that's just like our English me. So if it were the direct object, it would be may. Same word, it means the same thing, but this just shows different use in a sentence. Let's look at an adjective. If you have an adjective magnus, which means big, this US tells us that it's modifying or describing something masculine versus magna with this A ending, that ending would tell us it still means big, but that it's describing something feminine. And now let's look at a noun. We've already talked about it a little bit, but if we were to look at the noun puella, which means girl, with that A ending, that would be the subject, the nominative case. But if you want to make it the direct object, you're going to give it an AM ending. Still means girl, the definition is still based on the base here, but the ending tells us it's doing something else grammatically in the sentence.